Hi everybody, welcome to my latest video, which is part two of door insulation fun. Plus, you can probably see that I'm still existing within kind of a partial cloud. There's a glimmer of sunlight over yonder, but mostly it's been very gloomy. That's the first I've seen blue skies in a while, and it means that my solar energy system is really struggling. And later in the video, I go through um, yeah, what's, what that's like, what it actually means to try to exist off-grid with a small solar system. So I have lots of stuff to share with you in this video. If you haven't seen part one, click somewhere up there and take a look. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do consider subscribing if you like my stuff. I've got lots of fun natural building stuff coming up and just general off-grid life. And let's just get straight into the video and I'll check in again at the end. It's gloomy, but as far as I can tell, it's dry, so I'm gonna move outside and attempt to do some carpentry stuff. But first, let's say hello to this guy. Hi, where is your house? Where's your house? I don't know if this guy's a slug. He's got the little antenna things. Looks like a snail without its shell. Snail cam. Are you lost? Another cloudy, sort of bright, but still cloudy, overcast day. But it's not raining at all. It was in the morning, but it stopped, and that means I can come outside to my makeshift workbench and get some stuff done. I'm working on insulating my door. It's taking a lot of um, time because I'm really puzzling through things as I encounter them. So there's certain parts of the door that I'm not sure how I'm gonna do. Plus, I haven't really been able to set up a workshop outside because it's been raining so much. And that's meant that I haven't been able to cut the cork and that's what I'm using for insulation. So this stuff here is called expanded corkboard, and it's amazing stuff. It's just also ridiculously, ridiculously dusty. It's really easy to cut, but it just creates this fine dust that goes everywhere, and it's definitely a job for outside. So let me show you what I've done so far on the door, and then we're gonna come back outside and cut a piece of this cork to fit uh, into one of the bays, which will make sense in one second. So this is where I'm at with the door. I'm still not 100% sure what to do about the window, so let's just ignore that top part even exists for now. The bottom part, this little great thing was giving me a little bit of a challenge, but I've got some ideas for that. And right now, my focus is cutting the cork to fit in all these little bays. And that's because it's going to continue raining pretty soon, and cutting the cork outside is the only solution, really. So if I can get this job done, it means I can start puzzling through the top part and do the carpentry required for that. So let's go cut some cork. So I've made this little plan of the measurements for the cork. And basically what I'll start with is this top part here, and then this right angle will be these two pieces here. I'll get this measurement and then this little measurement as well. And then I'll be ready to start cutting. So 12 centimeters, more or less. Four and a half. make the marks and I never remember where they are. So, uh, let me do this again, but this time with chalk, if I can find my chalk. Okay, I've got this super chunky chalk. Not exactly the most accurate, but it's definitely better than what I had before. So, let's do this. So this wonderful little Japanese saw, pole saw, is the best tool I've found for this job. It cuts through amazingly, it's got nice fine teeth, and I'm also going to use this for something very ridiculous and very time consuming shortly. So keep watching and you'll see what I do with this guy. It's kind of insane, but also quite necessary. And then this is the dust, and you can see it's really fine gets everywhere, it's 
crazy. It's okay, it's environmentally friendly. So it's definitely fine for the outside. But I don't want that kicking around inside my house, even though my house is insanely dusty anyways. I don't need to add to it with this stuff. Okay, I just need to take a little bit off and then it f should fit in nice and tightly. So you can see it's really gloomy out there and you can probably hear that noise, which is the solar generator and it's down to 6%. My solar system is currently at 40%. It's charging very slowly because there's not much sun, but there's a little bit. So my power is kind of touch and go at the moment and I'm trying to conserve. Um, but I'm really lucky to have this guy. I got it for free from Blue Eddy um, several months ago and I definitely, it's coming in handy for me for sure. So after a little break to make a fire and do a bunch of firewood related things, um, I'm back at it. I will say, don't underestimate the amount of time it takes to do fire stuff. It will take up a lot of your time. I feel like in the summer, it's the watering of the garden that takes up loads of time, and then in the winter, firewood prep. So being off-grid, you lose kind of hours of the day doing uh, these daily tasks, and you wonder where the day's gone, and firewood and watering are often the answers to that question. Firewood is done for the next few days, the fire's on, Everything's going to be nice and cozy in there pretty soon, and I'm ready to move back to the cork where I have to start this ridiculous job. So in order for this board to fit into the door, I have to slice off a very thin layer of the entire sheet of cork. So the cork has some thickness, I think it's 25 mil, and the door is probably about 22 or 21 mil thick. I could have ordered the correct thickness of cork, had it delivered, and just put it in the door, but cork comes in fairly big packages and I only needed like four sheets. It's also very expensive, I probably would have had to pay for delivery, and it just didn't make sense. It also didn't make sense because I have a whole bunch of cork still left over from when I did my floor, and I want to use it up. So it's just an example of trying to use what I have, get it off of the mezzanine, out of my life and into the door and so it means I have to do some ridiculous cutting and I've been successful with this technique on the other triangles that are already in the door. This is a much larger triangle so it might be a bit more difficult but I'll just go slow, I'll get there in the end and this piece will be in the door before I know it. So time to get to it, let the ridiculous sawing begin. This is the width of the space so if I can get the cork to the same thickness as the wood, more or less, that's what I'm aiming for. The cork is kind of squishy, but not as squishy as you might think. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be as close as possible. This is actually the first time I've used this as a guide. Uh, mostly I just do it by eye. And I think I'll just continue to do it by eye because this is kind of in the way. And now that I have these slices out of it like this, I kind of just very gently, very slowly, and very annoyingly go across the top and as I get to the cut for each section it just kind of pops out. If I go too fast entire chunks of the stuff rip out and that's not ideal. So you just have to be really slow, really methodical, and really ridiculous. I think it's clear what I'm doing and it's clear how ridiculous the whole operation is but I'm getting there slowly to a 
piece of board that's a few millimeters thinner than what it is now. So it'll fit in space. So that's kind of the final product there. You can sort of see the differences in thickness. It's not a huge amount, but it's enough that it wouldn't fit if I didn't do this. So it's a necessary step. It's saving me buying more cork. And as with many tasks that are repetitive and ridiculous, I find it weirdly enjoyable. And I've got a lot of this to do. So I'm gonna put the camera down and just get on with this work. I'll check in when I'm ready to put the piece of cork into the door triangle. The job is done. The piece has been trimmed down, but as you can see here, uh, a little chunk has fallen off. But that's okay because I can just find some scrap cork and stuff it into the space when the time comes. Um, yeah, I really didn't get much done. I only got one triangle done and I was hoping to get them all done, but that's just how it goes. I got busy with a few other tasks around the place and filming makes things go a lot slower. Uh, these are my excuses, <laughs> but hopefully I'll get this job done tomorrow, at least getting the cork cut so that if I do have to move back inside because of the weather, this messy job will be finished and it won't hold me back. I have a lot of cork, hey. cork dust. Wow, that really doesn't want to come out of my mouth. So I'm gonna go have a drink of water. I'll see you tomorrow for some more fun with expanded cork board. And I'm gonna go drink a glass of water and get this dust out of my face because it's quite unpleasant, quite unpleasant indeed. Good morning, I started work early. I just got up, had my coffee and just got straight into cork cutting. I haven't even had my breakfast and basically I'm just trying to beat any rains that may or may not come today. It doesn't say it's gonna rain until the evening, but never trust a Portuguese weather report. That's what I always say, at least that's my experience. So I didn't put the cork board in uh, yesterday that, that I finished because I didn't wanna put it in and then have to pull it out again to install the piece above. And that was because it's brittle and it might break, but then what did I go and do? I ended up standing on it by accident and snapping it off. Nothing a little bit of tape can't solve. Uh, and I've also been really hard at work on all the other pieces. So I've got everything on the bottom ready to go in and I've installed the piece of wood above. So let's just stick some cork into the door. So forgive the darkness, I've been trying really hard to conserve power. The lights don't take too much, but every little bit helps. And I'm also down to some, I think this might be my last battery and I need it for my drill. So, so that's the reason for the extra doom and gloom in here. All right, so this is what the door looked like as of yesterday. And I have all of the pieces I need cut and sliced off and ready to go in. So let's do that now. this go? That's where it broke. Is that where it broke? There we go. So I am actually really happy with this. And the next job is going to be, I'll either insulate the top of the door or maybe I'll work on the bottom. I want to make a little grate there. I haven't decided yet. I'm gonna switch off the lights, <laughs> save some power, have some breakfast, and contemplate my next steps. It's just so much nicer and brighter out here, which is good news because even though there's no full sun, the solar power does kind of trickle in little by little and I see a patch of blue sky over there so that's a good sign because I really am on my last little bits of power. Worst case scenario which might happen at some point this winter because it is looking like a rainy one I have a few friends that are on the grid that battery though gigantic and cumbersome it is portable so I could schlep the battery over to their house with a bottle of wine hang out for a while charge it up and bring it home um, I haven't confirmed this with any of my friends that are on the grid, but perhaps <laughs> perhaps that's a, a possibility. So I've had my breakfast and I'm feeling really good. I've had a great morning of work already 
and I'm going to power on. I think what I'm going to do next is insulate the top of the door for two reasons. First of all, it's not raining right now, and it's not supposed to rain until later today, and that means I can come out and cut the cork. It's not a job I want to be doing inside, whereas the job involving the bottom of the door is something I can definitely do inside. And the second reason is, if I just get this cork cut and put in place, I'll have an insulated door, and I can check that off my list. I won't have a window, but um, I'll have the cork in place, and when I'm ready to do the window, it'll be very, very easy for me to remove it and just do that work, chop the cork to the correct size to go around the window, and put it all back in place. So I have more cork in my future today. I'm just going to get on with it and get it done. Okay, I've got to slice off a little thin strip here, and then I've got to slice off the top and put it in place. So I'll check in when that's done. Okay, I've done it. I've insulated my door, and in doing so, I've managed to make my place even darker. But pretty soon, I'm going to cloud the whole thing in tongue and groove. I just need to figure out what I'm doing with the window. So that's next on my list for projects, and I'm very happy to have this finished. It's been a long time coming, and I'm curious to see if it's going to make my place a little warmer. And as you can see out here, I have all of the <laughs> uh, cork carnage everywhere. Um, like I said, it's dusty, and it's still very overcast and very gloomy out. And my solar system is struggling to recharge, but it's getting there slowly. However, tomorrow will be an interesting day. My solar setup is amazing. I'm super happy with it, even though it's quite small, relatively speaking. It's generally amazing, but it's consistent days like this, and then days where it's raining and there's no sun at all, that kind of screw you. So I'm monitoring the situation. My solar battery, the big battery, is, is no more. It's down to 4%. The house is around 62%, but that'll go down overnight especially since I'm going to be using my computer and charging some stuff up tonight. And so by tomorrow morning, my system should be pretty low, like it was this morning. And if it is, I'll probably take a road trip to the pizza place or to a cafe, charge up my computer, do a bunch of work there, connect it to the, the mains, and hope that a little glimmer of sunshine gets through tomorrow to top up my um, solar again. So it's a bit of a balancing act. You have to be pretty aware of what you're using when it's like this. Generally, I don't really worry about power at all. The sun usually shines once every few days here in Portugal. It's these consistent gloomy days that mean it doesn't have a chance to charge back up. And 
and it doesn't have a chance to charge up my battery. If I didn't have that solar battery, I would be super screwed um, and I definitely would need a petrol generator. So having some kind of a backup when you have a small system like mine, which is only three panels and one lithium battery, um, is important. You have to have that backup, I think, for days like this. If I didn't have a freezer and a fridge, not that big of a deal, but I do and so I want to keep those running and that means I have to be a little careful about what I'm using and keep my eye on things. So the solar generator is out of power. My system is currently doing okay on battery power, 60 something percent. And my electronics are mostly dead. I don't have any Makita batteries left. So down to the bare bones and we'll see what tomorrow brings. But I could be going on a trip to a cafe or a restaurant or somewhere to sit with my computer and charge up my stuff. So I'm here at one of the localish cafes. It's not my closest one, but it's the one that has a PowerPoint that I can use. And I'm here because I don't have any power at my house. The battery is charging at friends, and hopefully a little bit of the ambient light gets into my system and charges it up a little bit so the fridge doesn't go off. But um, yeah, this is where I'm at. So it's around noon, and my house is sitting just under a very heavy looking gloomy cloud. And I'll be curious to see how much solar, if any, is sneaking through to my system. So let's go take a look. The lights are turning on, that's a good sign. So before I went out to the cafe to charge my computer, I had everything in my house plugged into the solar generator, uh, except for the lights. I've since removed the solar generator and taken it to my friend's place where it's charging up, and I'll collect that later on today. But when I unplugged the power bar from the solar generator, instead of plugging it into the system of the house, I plugged it into itself. There's a lot of white cords, it's quite confusing. So the 3% that I managed to scrounge out from within this cloud, possibly that only charged up that much because I completely and accidentally unplugged the fridge. So I'm going to continue to monitor and see how much it, it climbs up. Probably not very much. There's not a lot of sun coming through here, but at least it has sort of stopped raining. So I'm hopeful there'll be a bit more sun later on. Up until now, I haven't really been too mindful about the, the power I'm using. If I needed to charge something, I would just charge it. Whereas I think what I need to do is when the weather gets like this, maybe I just don't use power tools um, for a stretch of time. Maybe I try not to use my computer too much. I won't be watching TV shows. Or maybe I only use it for work. Maybe I have to unplug my fridge at night um, for a few hours. So there's all kinds of things I could be doing to just sort of cruise by when the weather's like this. And I haven't tried any of those things yet. So it's all a big experiment. Um, I'm super happy with my solar system, but it's times like these where you definitely do need a, a backup generator if you want to continue powering things. I could also just turn it all off and just have the lights on and that would last for ages, but I do want to have a fridge and I have a freezer full of stuff, so that's not going to happen. But if you're somebody who can live uh, with a little bit more discomfort than me, then maybe you can sort of uh, just eke it out without using any power at all. I'm not that person. I like I like power. I like my computer. I have work to do on there. I like stuff out of the freezer. I do enjoy ice cubes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, yeah, it's all a learning experience. I'm um, kind of enjoying this experience. It's allowing me to figure out what my sort of maybe wants are for upgrading the system. Um, when I look at a weather forecast, I'll be able to kind of know how long my power might last and anything I might need to do, things I might not, not be able to use for a certain period of time. And at the end of all this, it might turn out that one day I'll need to invest in a petrol generator. So we'll see, it's all new to me. I've never lived off grid before and it's all these little things that are part of the learning curve. So along with making sure you have a lot of firewood ready, uh, another thing is having a backup generator of some kind if you wanna keep your power running in the winter. So these are all amazing things to know and I'm just adding it to the list of Things learned along the way, and going forward, I'll do my best to plan a little bit better. For the most part, I think I'm finished for the day. I'm gonna have a nap, I'm gonna go to my friend's place later on and pick up the solar generator. We're gonna play some cards, maybe drink some coffee, maybe drink some wine, 
and that'll be me. So carpentry on the door is going to wait for another day and I'm just going to, yeah, go with the seasons, I guess. Sometimes the weather dictates what you're able to do and this is one of these cases, so just have to go with the flow. There's no rush. So the solar panels are bringing in 54 watts of energy and my fridge, because it was off for a while, is using 62 watts as are, I guess, the lights, which don't take very much at all. So it seems like it's all being powered independently of the battery for now. And nothing's charging, but nothing's being taken away, which is good because the system will cut out at 25% battery. And I'm at 30, so I don't want to be using that too much. The rain is back. You can hear the pitter-patter. And I'm here to check on my solar generator. Amazing, it's at 93%. It's been charging for about maybe five hours. And I'll try to get it to 100. So the rain started again, but my battery's almost fully charged, which is amazing. My friends have really come to the rescue. I've got a bottle of wine for them, and it's time to play some cards. This is the canasta face. <laughs> no, that's <too> creepy. <laughs> I am the winner. <laughs> well, luckily you're a really good winner. Thank you. Very humble. Very humble. Cheers. It was nice meeting you. <laughs> Loser. <laughs> Usually that's me. Ciao. Come back soon. Okay, it's weird. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> Check out this beautiful, sunshiny, glorious day. I'm so happy to see this. The sun is still over there, not hitting my panels directly, but it's already bringing in some juice. And just in the nick of time as well, because my solar generator is down to 40%. So hopefully today's the day. I can get everything juiced back up, take advantage of the sun, and uh, it'll take the pressure off just a little bit. And a little bit more importantly, because this is what keeps my lights on, is the actual system itself is down to 28%, and it's bringing in 35 watts, 40 watts. So as soon as we see the sun come over a little bit more, get a bit higher, I'll start to see the system charge up quite rapidly, I think, I hope. So I'll keep you keep you posted on what's happening with this. I don't know if it's interesting to people, but solar has been quite a struggle for me in the past couple days. And yeah, it's just one of the realities of living here off grid. In the winter, not only do you have rainy days where you don't see the sun at all, you also have days that are perfect, but the sun isn't up as long. Obviously the days are shorter, plus it's lower in the sky. So your system doesn't bring in as much power. Um, and yeah, that's something to keep in mind, obviously. Uh, some people will have those panels that move automatically following the sun. So if you can place something like that in a, in a spot where you'll get the sun from rise to sunset, that would be one way to kind of improve the system. That's not a possibility for me. I don't really have the space. My panels are already on my roof anyways. Another way to conserve power would be to turn my fridge freezer off at night. I know that's something that people uh, do quite commonly. And it does take a surprising amount of juice to... Uh, keep it going overnight. As long as the sun shines, there's absolutely no problem. It's when we get those uh, multiple day rainy spells. So it's just a part of life here and it's kind of a nice thing to be able to monitor it. I think it's essential in winter. And also it just makes you more conscious about the kind of energy you're using. Um, yeah, lots of things to keep in mind and I'm just gonna keep an eye on things. It's 9 a.m. now. I think the system has eked out another percentage, so it's up to 29%. So I'm going to get some work done and check in again in a couple hours and see where it's at. The sun is over yonder beyond the olive tree, so it's still on quite an angle to my panels. The clouds are kind of rolling in from the hills, so that could be interesting. But things are speeding right along. It's only been about an hour and a half since I was on, I think, 29%. And I sort of clawed my way up to 49 So. Even though the sun isn't hitting the panels directly, when it's a cloudless sky and the sun is shining brightly, it definitely does 
uh, pump the power in. So seeing how quickly my system charges up, even when the sun is over at an angle like that, has given me some, some renewed hope. So I'm pretty sure I'll have my solar system battery at 100% fairly soon, in a couple of hours. And when I do, I can start charging up my big battery. And at the same time, I'll probably also make sure all of my tool batteries are charged and all of my electronics and everything is charged. Charge while the sun shines. And if I have a rainy few days in the next week, uh, hopefully I can just eke it out, especially since I'm gonna be a lot more um, cautious about how I use my power. So I guess that's it. That's just life with the solar system and I have to adapt. I have to learn as I go, think of some tips for saving power. And yeah, just be a lot more conscious of what I use. So, I'm very happy for this beautiful day. I am a little concerned with the clouds that you can kind of see rolling in behind me. So hopefully everything gets charged because it is supposed to rain a little later today. I'm hoping it's going to be in the evening, but, but who knows? I haven't checked the forecast today actually. So, so yeah, it all looks good. And I'm going to head out into the sunshine and continue work on my door. It's 1.30 and I'm almost fully charged, which is good news because it looks like we've got some clouds rolling in and it feels like it could rain fairly soon, even though it's not called for until later on. But it'll be interesting to see how it all changes. Earlier when it was sunny, I was bringing in around 400 and something watts. Now it's only 141, so obviously that means everything will charge a lot more slowly. Once this is at 100%, I'm gonna switch the power to steer to the uh, solar battery, uh, the big bluetti thing that I have, and hopefully that can get charged up a little bit as well, because right now I think it's down to about 9%. So, the gloominess is coming, but I think I've been able to get enough power to keep me going for at least a couple days. Hello from within a cloud. It's I think it's about 12.30 in the afternoon and I'm in a cloud. <laughs> it's pretty gloomy out here. It's not amazing for the solar, but the rain is amazing for the land. So I'm not gonna start complaining just yet. My garden, however, is pretty flooded because I don't really have a proper overflow set up for my cistern there in the, in the corner. So it's kind of leaking out at high speed a little waterfall and it's pretty much just kind of going everywhere. The beauty of it is that it just sinks back into the land and so it's all good but yeah I just thought I'd show you guys the weather today it's it's very unusual so my little ghosts look nice and cozy and happy there and the valley is shrouded in mist but I still think it's quite beautiful. So while it's pretty gloomy out there, it's super toasty and warm inside my house because I've got the fire blazing. I'll chuck another log on there, but it's nice and hot and it's extremely cozy in here. And even from within this cloud, I'm still getting 96 watts. My fridge freezer is using 48 and the battery is Charging up a little bit, very slowly, but it means that I'm not frightened to use my computer, which I was earlier today and for the past few days. So I'm getting some video work done, cozy inside by the fire, and uh, hiding away from the cloud that, that lurks outside. So, all in all, a fun way to spend a Sunday. You can see the sun peeking through the clouds, or at least trying to, as the solar saga continues, and today, uh, I've got about 250 watts coming in, and I'm 38% charged on my home system. So this is what 250 watts looks like. It's about 10 in the morning. The sun is still not really directly over my panels. And yeah, and over there, we've got some cloudiness looming. So it's a constant struggle. Which way will the clouds go? And yeah, what's going to happen? Fun, fun. And so luckily I've got this Bluetti solar battery thing back up. It's charged up, taken it to my friend's place three times now. So if you don't have friends on the grid who take pity upon you, something like this is a little less useful without the panels uh, in situations like this. 
So I'm really lucky to have that Blue Eddy solar battery, but if I wanted to use it to its full potential, I should pick up some of the solar panels. Um, right now, I either, like I said, take it to my friend's place and charge it up when the situation is truly dire, or I basically just, once my system battery is fully charged, I then plug the Blue Eddy in and then it charges through the panels on the roof. Um, so I can never really charge the Blue Eddy until my home system is charged. Whereas if I had the separate solar panels, I'd be able to charge them both at the same time. It just allows me to get every little bit of energy out of the sunshine rather than kind of having to wait until I'm fully charged on one battery before I can move on to the next. So an investment for the future, for sure. Right now I have three panels up there on the roof. And with the system I have, I can go to a maximum of six panels. One day I'll get three more panels. That's always been my plan. I can go to a maximum of eight lithium batteries. I'll never get eight batteries because the six panels would never really be able to charge eight batteries. So I'd love to get three more panels and one more battery and then that'll be my system. And I think based on what I've seen with my experience with this winter, although it is a particularly rainy winter so far, um, I think that'll really be good, especially with the battery as a backup. Overall, I'm super happy with my system and I'm seeing the ways that I could tweak it and improve it. Hopefully sharing all of this information about my uh, struggles through the clouds has been useful for anybody out there that might be considering getting a system of their own. So um, any questions, ask me in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. I'm definitely not an expert on this. I have done a whole video on my own solar system. So if you're interested, take a look at that where I try to explain all of the parts in terms that I understand and hopefully people that are new to all this stuff would understand as well. And so that's my solar system and my experiences. I think I'll probably say goodbye from this video. Done a lot of cork and we've done a bit of solar. So a little bit of a mix and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do think about subscribing. If you have any questions at all or if you just want to say hello, please leave me a comment. I really do love hearing from people. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.